In my universe, the piglins evolved in the Warped Forest, and this is the Warped Witch, our fearless queen. She seeks to expand her dominion to new dimensions with a powerful piglin horde at her command. It's my goal to become her general and take every bit of gold from this new dimension. She wants us to find the Piglin King, ruler of this nether, and make him open up a mysterious nether gate. But the piglins here have been dabbling in some dark magic and creating some formidable foes. Can you raise the morale of our soldiers by liking and subscribing? Alright, now here's 100 days as a warped piglin. Day 1, the warped witch told us to scout out the surrounding area looking for any hostile piglins. While I was out exploring, I was ambushed by a piglin, but then something scared it off. As I looked around the corner to thank my hero, it turned out to be this video sponsor, Rec Room, which you can easily download for free using the link in my description. Rec Room is a free to play social game with voice chat so you can hang out with your friends or make some new ones. You can play today on iOS, Android, PS4, and PS5, Xbox, Steam, and Oculus in VR. If you don't have the same device as your friend, no worries. Rec Room is fully cross-platform, so no matter what devices your friends are on, you can all play together. There are tons of different games you can play, and my favorite feature is that you can even build your own room to share with the world, try to capture the flag and paintball, or have some fun in the laser tag arena. You can even go bowling with friends, traverse roleplay adventure maps, or try out parkour. And yes, there are plenty of Minecraft themed things to do. With literally millions of different rooms to explore, Rec Room is like a virtual theme park that anyone can enjoy. So download this free fun game using the link in my description, and you may even run into me on there. After making sure I was all good, Rec Room ran off to play some laser tag with some friends, and I needed to get some basic tools. I probably should have brought some stuff with me through the portal. I have a bad tendency of getting caught up in the excitement and not thinking things through sometimes. Anyway, after getting some wood and tools, I ventured out a little further and found myself amongst the skirmish. I ran in to help my brethren with just eight hearts and a wooden pickaxe. I guess using such a weak axe against them really offended them because they all turned against me and began chasing me. I managed to escape, but I did not have a lot of health left. I needed food. The only thing is, in my injured state, I would not be able to take on a hoglin and win. To be honest, even at full health right now, it would still probably just one-shot me. So I wandered out from the crimson forest and found some mushrooms growing nearby. I made myself some stew and got back to full health. Then it was time to report back to the portal. On the way back, I found some blackstone so I was able to upgrade my equipment and now have more of a fighting chance. On the beginning of day two, I found an old friend waiting for me at the portal. I'm glad to see you made it through your first day here. Hey, I'm stronger than I look. Do I have any new orders yet? Yes, we've been tasked with setting up some temporary defenses around the portal to protect it until we find a better place to set up base. I'll help you gather some wood though. After gathering some gross crimson wood, we put together this small little wall with a gate and an elevated pathway. Then my friend went to go on patrol so I stood guard at the portal. I'm glad we fortified it because some piglins found us and tried their best to get in. I really felt unprepared for the attack, but luckily the warped witch returned and hit them with a barrage of potions. The portal was safe for now, but we still had an army to feed. So me, along with some other piglins, were sent out for the next few days to hunt hoglins in their surrounding areas. When it comes to hunting these creatures, you have to be very careful. One wrong move could be fatal. I tried to be as clever as possible, trying out different ways to hunt them without taking too much damage. And there was one time where I provoked one too many hoglins, so I had to run for my life. The hunting trip wasn't all bad though. Look how the little babies get along so well. Okay, so during the hunting expedition, I needed to find the most efficient way to cook all my food. You could craft sticks to use as fuel, but it turns out you can cook one extra pork chop when you use those sticks instead to craft ladders for fuel. I continued hunting until I had more than enough, and then I returned back to the witch to give her some of my spoils to help fuel this war. We weren't even here a week before the witch was ready to search for more familiar lands. She said there were warped forests in this new dimension, but we would need to venture farther out to find one. I took day six and seven to explore, and I eventually came across this soul sand valley. That's when I saw this tiny wither skeleton. The queen said there would be strange creatures here, <laughs> but it didn't seem that menacing. It ran when it saw me, so I curiously pursued, and that's when I discovered this weird looking blackstone golem, who actually did a lot of damage. Luckily, he was a slow adversary, so I managed to defeat him. I tried to catch up with the little wither skeleton, but I found him surrounded by more of those golems, so I thought it was best that I probably stay away from these lands. The next day, I found a fortress and the residents seemed okay with me being there, so I ran around looting all the chests, and I found myself three diamonds and a saddle, along with some other good things. I had been here for only eight days and I already had enough diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe. I was feeling pretty proud of myself until I noticed some piglins nearby. They seemed to be messing with one of the blazes from the fortress, and I didn't know exactly what was going on, but it did not look good. I ran in and defeated both of them with ease. The blaze seemed pretty grateful, but kind of shy. It gave 
gave me a golden apple before flying off. I guess the Piglin King is a pretty oppressive ruler over the other mobs. After leaving the fortress, I spent days 9 and 10 mining for gold until I had more than enough to complete a full set of armor. Probably would have been smart to get this before hunting hoglins, but I am just a Piglin grunt, so hopefully I'll get smarter as I move up the ranks. On day 11, I made it back to our camp, but the portal was gone. My fears subsided when the warped witch appeared, saying some other scouts were more successful in finding a warped forest. Once we made sure we had everything together, we abandoned the camp and headed toward lure lands. Day 12, we arrived at a more familiar looking place. This warped forest was a bit different than the one from our universe, but it was much better than that gross crimson forest we spawned in. The queen told us to cut down some trees and clear out the area while she respawned the portal. And while I was hard at work, an enderman teleported right in front of me and startled me. Hello there. Oh, you startled me. You should know better than to do that to a piglin. I do apologize. I'm just a bit perplexed. You see, we endermen travel freely between the universal dimensions, attempting to keep order and maintain stability. Yeah, so? Did you know you were in the wrong universe? Our queen brought us here to take over- I see. I should have suspected a witch. Are you here to stay? I don't think so. Right then. I will say you did a good job rescuing that blaze, and maybe the piglin king has overextended his reach. Wait, how did you- Endermen are considered allies in my universe, as we do share the warped forests, but this one seemed a bit concerned about our presence here. Since he was gone, I just shrugged it off because we needed a proper base in case of any attacks. On day 13, the trees were cleared out, but the area needed to be paved and leveled for building. And on day 14, my comrade showed up with some new orders. Hey, new orders from up top. You found his saddle the other day, right? Yeah, got it right here. What's up? All right, let's ride. We were tasked with searching for a bastion to conquer, establishing a foothold over the region while also hoping to find any clues of where the Piglin King's castle could be. When we came across the Soul Sand Valley in our travels, I advised against not going through there after last time. After a few days of meandering around on our striders, we did manage to find a bastion. All right, head back to base to report this and make sure to bring back some reinforcements. I think I'm gonna take a closer look. You got it, and please be careful. And <laughs> no promises. As day 17 began, I slowly worked my way closer to the bastion and watched for any piglins in the surrounding area. As I got closer, I was spotted and a few piglins began to attack me. I quickly met them in battle and knocked them down. But with my cover blown and the feeling of adrenaline coursing through my veins, I decided to brave the bastion. I kept on fighting until I had to face a brute. They hit hard, so I had to be extra careful. And just when I thought I was already in over my head, a giant piglin beast appeared towering over me. I quickly ran to hide and blocked myself into a corner. Luckily, I heard the sound of a bunch of piglins rushing into the bastion. My comrade found some reinforcements nearby and led them here. I quickly ran back out and went straight for the piglin beast. It took some effort, but soon the beast was slain and we were able to take over the bastion. As I swept through the building, looking for any stragglers, I found a chest with a nice blue crossbow in it, along with my favorite thing ever, blocks of gold. One thing I didn't find though was any clues to the location of another bastion. Once the area was fully secure, I met back with my scouting partner. <laughs> didn't I say be careful? I am alive, aren't I? Check out this cool crossbow I found. Looks good on you. I can clean it up here if you want to go back and report this victory. And tell her about the giant piglin we just fought. Day 18, I started heading back to the base when I realized I would have to stop at the Soul Sand Valley. As far as I know, bone meal is the only way to turn netherrack blue. And I remembered seeing huge fossils laying all around the Soul Sand Valleys that one could easily turn into a lot of bone meal. Luckily, it was a pretty safe trip. And once I thought I had enough, I got back on my strider and began the journey back to the Warped Witch. On day 21, I made it back and I found her flipping through a spell book. I told her of the conquered bastion and how I was able to slay a giant piglin beast. Then she rewarded me by pelting me in the face with a potion. Not really what I was expecting, but I knew what that meant. I felt my whole body beginning to warp and change. My head got heavier and my muscles began to feel stronger. I was promoted to a piglin brute. A step up from the common grunt, but I still had a ways to go before I was made general. I did feel like I could take a few more hits than before though. Along with the promotion, I received orders to construct a castle for the grand warped army. I guess she was tired of all the little camps we had set up, so I took some of the gold I got from the bastion and began trading with my fellow piglins. I figured it would be a lot quicker to buy resources instead of collecting them myself. I began constructing a solid foundation for the castle on day 22. It took me about two days altogether to have the build plotted out with an addition of a surrounding balcony and stairs. Day 24, my building was interrupted by a familiar voice, but when I turned around, something seemed wrong. Hey, looking like a great start. Thanks. What's wrong? Unfortunately, our last victory did not go unnoticed. There is a massive battle going on and they need every piglin they can get. I'm right behind you. The battle was about a day's journey away, and that's with riding our striders without taking any stops. When we arrived at the area my friend spoke of, a major battle was occurring before our 
our eyes. I couldn't tell who would win, but it was time to turn the tide. We ran in, and I tried to fight every piglin I could. The battle was epic, and lasted for quite a while. By the time the dust settled, I was glad to look across the battlefield and see only blue faces standing. Another victory. While my friend decided to tend to the wounded, I knew that castle wouldn't build itself, so I headed on out. On day 26, I got a little lost and stumbled upon a basalt delta. I figured I might need some basalts for my build, so I took the next two days to collect some. And on day 28, I began heading home, but I did take some time to replenish my food supply. When I arrived home on day 29, I began building the main structure of the castle. There were a couple interruptions though. The first was a piglin scout that showed up. I happened to notice him and began shooting at him with my new crossbow and the arrows I got from trading. However, he escaped. I really hoped I wasn't the one that accidentally led him here. The second interruption was that I had to give up the rest of my gold for more than enough resources to finish the build, but it was more than worth it when the end of day 32 arrived and I had built a huge formidable fortress. It wasn't completely done, but I was sure the queen would be happy with it, and it was better than nothing for what happened next. On day 33, the piglin scout from before led some of his fellow soldiers to our base. We had to fend off all the piglin invaders with not much time to prepare. We still outnumbered them, so we were able to achieve another victory. After the initial battle, I saw some piglins trying to escape, and the witch did not want them to return with even more troops. So I tracked them down and stopped them before they could report back. The next day, before working on the inside of the castle, I decided to add some outer defenses with a nice solid wall to protect us from any more attacks. My fellow piglins were eager to get up and patrol on the wall. Now we could easily spot any more scouts or attacks. I had a lot of fun on day 35 and 36 designing the inside of the castle. The throne room was very menacing, with a big seat for the queen. It was sad bartering my last gold away for iron, but I was hoping this build would get me another promotion. The last thing this place needed was some blue lighting, and that meant I would have to venture back to the soul sand valley to collect some soul sand. Last time, I got lucky and didn't run into any problems, but this time, I was not as lucky. I guess before, I was running from place to place collecting bones and not staying in one area for too long, but this time, I was in one spot collecting soul sand for a while when a few more of those blackstone golems snuck up on me and began quickly eroding away my health. Since I was more agile than they were, I quickly distanced myself from them and switched to my crossbow. This was definitely a better strategy to deal with them. Once I had enough sand, I began looking for a fortress. On day 38, I found one not too far away from the valley and set up some low hanging beams to protect me from the wither skeletons. I heard that piglins from this dimension turn into zombies if they go to the overworld. I did not want to risk that, so this was the only way for me to get coal. They didn't seem too happy to have the privilege of being turned into torches for the warped witch's castle. But after a couple days of hunting them, I had enough coal plus this really cool wither skull. Day 40, I made it back to the base and began adding lighting around the castle. On day 41, I finished the main castle as requested and gave the queen a proper tour of her new palace. I could tell my fellow piglin brethren had higher morale now that they had a proper base of operations to protect and dwell in. The queen was also super impressed and led me to a part of the palace she turned into an armory. There was a lot of armor in there and she said I could now be promoted to a brute captain. I went to go change my armor, headed outside, and that's when I was met by a piglin brute with a gold helmet who I didn't recognize at first. Looks like we both got promoted. Hey, feeling any stronger? Totally. I can take on anything that comes our way, but not on an empty stomach. We've been tasked with collecting more food. I'll get mushrooms this time if you can handle hunting some hoglins. No problem. I had to travel a bit away from the castle to find any mushrooms. Our army had consumed what seemed like every mushroom in the vicinity, <laughs> but we weren't planning to stay here forever anyway. Once I found some unharvested lands, I spent day 43 and 44 running around collecting some more mushrooms for stew when the weirdest thing so far happened. I found these giant mushrooms, but you know what? I'll just let you watch what happened. Ow, why do people keep doing that? Whoa, you talk? Yes, we talk, obviously. You're supposed to those guys with the big noses. Yeah, but your mushrooms look way cooler. Look, I was just trying to collect some food. What other guys are you talking about? There was this gray mushroom looking guy with a big white cap. He was fighting with another guy over us. Here, we'll give you this blast fungus if you promise to capture those guys. Uh, okay. I don't know what they want from us, but just keep them as far away from us as possible. Let's get out of here. And as they ran off, I was still in shock with what just happened as I looked at what these mushroom things just gave me. After I shook off the confusion, I went to go try out this new artifact that they gave me. Since it was called Blast Fungus, I figured it could probably be used as a weapon. I went to go find some piglins to try it out on, and I found a few also collecting mushrooms. So I ran in and hit them with it, and now I know why it's called Blast Fungus. After I had done away with them, I began looting their stuff and found plenty of mushrooms to bring back. I spent day 45 
riding my trusty steed back to the castle with my large bounty. We should be set for a while now. And on day 46, I return to the warped palace to discover what I think the mushroom creatures were referring to the other day. Oh, I guess they were the ones the mushrooms were talking about. Uh, talking mushrooms? <laughs> Never mind. Where did you find them? They wandered into the crimson forest and I found them cornered by some hoglins. Here, I confiscated this from them. What is it? Some sort of dark magic, I suppose. Overheard them talking about using it to escape. I'll hold on to it for now. And I think I need to build a proper dungeon for those two. After turning in some of the mushrooms I found, I spent the last part of day 46 organizing my things and preparing for some more building. It took me two days to build this dungeon for the prisoners. I did make more than one cell so we can keep any other prisoners we capture during this warped invasion of the nether. While I was at it, I decided to build this nice little stable for the army striders to stay in. And now we just needed some more striders. So I spent the next two days looking for another fortress to hopefully find some more saddles for the strider cavalry that I was trying to put together. On day 52, I found a new fortress and this one was fairly large. It took a while to run around looking for chests, but eventually I found a saddle. Finally, the trip was worth it. But before I could continue the search, an arrow flew out of nowhere and almost hit me. I turned around and saw a piglin sniper far off reloading his crossbow. I ran for cover and when I tried to shoot back at him, another arrow came flying at me and this time it hit me. While I was stuck there, I had the idea of combining my crossbow with the blast fungus, creating an exploding crossbow. I wasn't too sure how to outmaneuver the sniper, but luckily that blaze I saved from near the beginning of my journey came out and shot fireballs at the sniper and flew off. With the sniper distracted, I worked my way around to where he was and defeated him with my new crossbow before he could even tell what happened. The next day, I continued to search the far end of the fortress and I noticed some more piglins nearby. I decided to try out this new thing that I got from those chefs. I didn't know what it was going to do, so I put up a barrier to protect myself just in case. Then I shot at one of the piglins and had them chase me inside. I got into position, punched the trap, setting off a huge explosion that did a lot of damage. I luckily survived. <laughs> that would have been very useful for those chefs in escaping. Anyway, I continued to search through the last part of the fortress and found another saddle. Day 54, I began riding back to base and pondered the sniper attack. I think the piglin king sent that guy after me. It was a little unnerving knowing that I was becoming a bigger target in his eyes, but that just meant I was becoming a stronger adversary. Near the end of day 55, I made it back to friendly territory and began collecting a few more striders for the stable. And by the end of day 56, I had a good start to my strider farm. The next day, I worked on improving the outer defenses of the castle. All this time around lava gave me the idea to use some of it to better protect the walls with. Now any attackers would have an even harder time getting in. And on day 58, my friend returned from his scouting mission with some good news. We found a piglin camp and it may have a clue we need to locate another bastion. The camp was about a two day trip away and we had to leave our striders at a shoreline and head inland to find the camp. On day 60, we made it to the piglin camp and we tried our best to blend into our surroundings, which was pretty hard with blue skin. It looked like a few piglins led by a piglin beast occupied the camp. We got our crossbows ready and began shooting at the piglin beast. Once he fell, we charged in to face the other piglins and with one final swing, the camp was ours, but not for too long. A couple hoglins surprised us wanting to join in on the fun and <laughs> then the camp was actually ours. So we looked through our new belongings. Look over here, I found a map. <laughs> Let's report it together this time. I don't really want a repeat of last time. We made it back to our striders on day 61 and began riding back to tell the warped witch about what we found. The following day, when we made it back, the queen gave my comrade some potions and told him to tend to the injured piglins in the infirmary. When I told her about the new bastion, she threw me some food and an awesome fiery axe, walked me back outside, and sent me to go scout it and clear it myself if possible. Apparently our forces were all tied up in other matters and she wanted it captured now. So I went on my way. On day 65, I arrived at the bastion, but there were no piglins in sight. Instead, I saw that little wither skeleton again. Or maybe it was a different one? I curiously moved closer to investigate, and I'm convinced now they're used to lure you in toward the Blackstone Golems for them to be able to get you more easily. Because when I went inside, I was ambushed by a few of those golems. They were a lot easier to fend off now, but it was still kind of scary. Definitely not as scary as when I found their leader. I shot an arrow at this giant monstrosity and it barely did a 
thing. So I ran in and hit him with my axe. That just got him angry. His hits were super strong. I tried my best to distance myself from him, to heal and reload, but he shot a whole blackstone block at me. Everything went dark for a second and I had so many bad effects on me. I had to continually run around trying not to stay in one place for too long. I didn't want to stay too far away or get too close and I hoped that he would dizzy from all this running in circles, <laughs> but it had no effect on him. When I got his health down about halfway, he turned blue and got even more aggressive. He knocked my health very low several times, so now was the time to use that golden apple I got a while ago. I slowly chipped away at his health while running for dear life, and when he got really low, I ran in and finally defeated him, but his death spawned two more golems. I did manage to kill them, but it was not a welcome fight after what I just went through. With the bastion finally cleared, I began to loot it. I found a chest with a weird stone and book inside. The book said that the stone could be used to phase through blocks. I tested it, and it shot this cool projectile that hit what looked like a blocked up doorway behind the chest. I had to figure this out. I walked over, held the stone to the wall, and phased through the wall into a treasure room with no way out. I quickly grabbed the gold inside there, and then I noticed this awesome gilded netherite armor resting upon an armor stand. It looked so good on me. I can see now why the Piglin King had this place protected by blackstone golems. I used the stone to phase back into the bastion and made my way back to the entrance. Day 66, I made it back outside and I saw a piglin. I did not want to be followed home, so I went to go fight him, still trying to calm down after everything that just happened. He just stood there like he was scared. Rightfully so. I did look rather daunting now. I ran at him, and when I got close, he pushed me into a pit filled with zombified piglins. I carefully worked my way through them to the other side and opened the gate there. When I went to go close the gate, I accidentally hit one and they all started chasing me. I ran and got on my strider, quickly riding away. <laughs> the next day, I noticed I was being followed, so I stopped and set up a trap, using the gold that I just got as bait. The piglin following me jumped for the gold without hesitation, before soon realizing that he was stuck. I left him there and went back to my strider to continue on home. On day 68, I made it back to the base and told the witch the epic tale I just lived through. She said I more than proved myself and finally made me general to her army. When I went outside, I saw I wasn't the only one to receive another promotion. Congratulations, I'd be honored to follow you into any battle, and I also gotta say, that armor is epic. Thank you, and I'm glad to have you as my captain. Now, let's get to work on finding the Piglin King's castle. Yes, sir. My first order as general was for every able-bodied piglin to search for another bastion. We spent the next several days venturing out even further in search of the Piglin King's castle, or at least any clues that would lead us there. The captain and my efforts toward the search proved unfruitful. However, we did rescue some piglins who were in distress. After that, we decided to head back to the castle. As day 73 was winding down, we reported back in hopes of good news from other scouts. But it turned out a lot of piglins were met with ambushes as they ventured farther into the Piglin King's land. The queen said she could make some potions of regeneration for them, but she would need gas tears to do that. It was now up to me to hunt down some ghasts. So I traveled to the Soul Sand Valley and began to hunt one ghast at a time. It was a much harder feat than I thought it would be. While some ghasts were easy to kill and get their tears, others would just fly away and the worst ones would die over lava. Once I thought I finally had enough tears for the potions, I quickly returned to help heal my injured brethren. With so many focused on taking care of the wounded and searching for the Piglin King, no one was really collecting food. So I headed over to a nearby crimson forest and took some time to hunt down some hoglins. This process was so much easier with my new axe. The hoglins took more damage and when they died, they dropped cooked pork chops. Day 84, I killed the last of the hoglins I found and headed on back with plenty of food to share. I spent the last part of that day checking on my fellow soldiers. Everyone was looking better now and was now able to have full stomachs. With a raisin morale, everyone was ready to head back into battle. Good timing too. Because a scout returned and told me of a fight happening in a basalt delta, we haven't really gone into those much because they're really difficult to traverse. Either way, I hopped on my strider and followed the scout toward the battle. On day 87, we arrived and watched as piglins tried their best to fight while avoiding lava. I took out my crossbow and began shooting at the enemy piglins. We suffered some losses, but we did manage to take control of the delta. And I also spotted my captain friend amongst the victors. The following day, we found what the piglins were protecting. An outpost and what looked to be a wall in progress. They put up a fierce fight, but we outnumbered them. A wall and an outpost? They seemed to be protecting something pretty important. And inside the outpost, we found a map to the piglin king's castle, plus three extra saddles. And we killed their trapped hoglins for food and took a little time to catch up with each other. After resting there and getting our fill of food, the captain and I, along with a grunt, captured some more striders and began heading toward the bastion we've been searching so long for. Despite my warning, the grunt strayed a little too far in front of 
us and fell victim to an ambush. There were some piglins with crossbows firing down from above us. We were sitting ducks on the striders. The captain understood the quicker we find the piglin king, the sooner we can end this war. Go on ahead. I'll take care of these guys. While he distracted them, I rode on toward the direction of the castle. That's when I was met by another piglin riding a strider. I charged at him in this deadly form of jousting, knocking him off into the lava. The map led me through a soul sun valley. I stopped at this abandoned camp to rest for a minute, and I was beginning to second guess my decision to continue on, leaving my captain behind. I was sure he could handle himself, but now that meant I would have to face the piglin king all by myself. My train of thought was broken when a flame came out of nowhere, lighting up the campfire before me. When I turned around, I saw the blaze that I saved and who saved me from that sniper, but he wasn't the only one to startle me. The enderman showed up too, and the three of us left the camp behind and ventured on to face the piglin king together. On day 93, we arrived at the long-awaited castle, and it looked awesome. Like for real, the piglin king is a good builder. <laughs> wow. Okay, but seriously, we started to move in closer, and the enderman teleported to the bridge and knocked a piglin off into the lava. Then a piglin beast jumped out and began attacking the enderman. When the enderman disappeared, the blaze went in and shot at the beast. I followed the best I could, working my way in, fighting several piglins. When I got to the bridge, the piglin beast was gone and the blaze was flying in the air. That's when a blackstone block went flying at the blaze, knocking him out of the sky and into the nether ship. I turned around to see the piglin king wearing the same armor as me. He put on his helmet and donned a huge blackstone arm. Then he shot a block at me and I quickly dodged it and shot back at him with my crossbow, knocking him back into his castle. I ran in and met him in his throne room. We began battling each other and were pretty evenly matched. I'm sure both of our healths were pretty low. Our fighting led to a higher level of the castle, so I pushed him back to the ledge and knocked him off. I quickly checked my inventory for anything useful and pulled out the sword stone. When the king made it back up to where I was, I shot it at him. It paralyzed him. The armor might have helped, but his helmet must have come off when he fell. While he was paralyzed, I searched him and found this cool red crossbow, the pride of the piglins. <laughs> then I dragged him out to a ship and was startled yet again. Great job! Oh, please stop doing that. You overthrew the piglin king and brought balance back to this nether. I assume you will now be going back to your home universe. Hopefully soon. We've officially conquered these lands. So once my queen gets what she came for behind the nether gate, we should be on our way. Well, I wish you luck. I'm going to take this one with me somewhere safe to heal and recover. I do hope we cross paths again though. And just like that, I was all by myself again. <laughs> well, not exactly. I did have the piglin king with me and it was time to make him take me to the nether gate the warped witch wanted to find. We took his ship and sailed through a familiar area. <laughs> we stopped sailing when I saw a close ally riding a strider our way. I'm glad to see you still in one piece. Would you expect anything less from a captain in our ranks? I guess not. Good job. On day 97, we finally arrived at the nether gate. We left the king on the ship, and when we got off, we saw some pillagers trying to open the nether gate. They did not take kindly to our presence there. We managed to fight them off, but before the captain could defeat the last one, I shot him with the sword stone. And now paralyzed, I put him with the king in the temporary brig I built. The gate was much bigger than I expected, and it looked like the pillagers tried using both a giant ram as well as magic to open this massive gate. Neither seemed to work though. I can't think of any way to open it, and I'm a little hesitant to try using that TNT over there. I'm at a loss too. It's almost like you have to open it from the inside. <laughs> That's it, you're a genius. Wait, what? We could use this to phase through the gate and open it from the inside. He took the source stone, and I watched as he disappeared in front of the nether gate. Then, the gate began to shake the ground as it opened. The captain came out, running back to me, and we both looked inside. It was really dark, and we were a little scared of what we would find in there. But then, we heard a loud roar, and ran further back to watch as two dragons flew out from the gate with a yellow witch riding one of them. They breathed out powerful flames, but then just flew off and disappeared into the distance. The captain and I just stood there looking at each other, stunned with what we just witnessed. I don't know if that's what the warped witch wanted to happen, or if we should have got her before opening the gate. Either way, we headed back to the ship. The ship was faster than a strider, but it still took two days to get home. That gave us just enough time to interrogate our prisoners. The Piglin King told me that the Yellow Witch showed up one day riding a dragon with an extra dragon egg with her. She was wanting a safe place to hide while she waited for the second egg to hatch. In exchange for some magical potions that would create a more powerful army for the king, the piglins built for her the nether gate, which she must have enchanted. And the key to the gate was the source stone he had the blackstone golems protect. Then it was time to talk to the pillager. He seemed terrified, but not of us. That's when he told us how that yellow witch should not be alive. His leader, the Archie Voker, apparently kicked her off an 
and ship into the void below, presumably to her demise. But if one of her dragons already had hatched, it very well could have saved her. But why would the yellow witch fake her death? Why would the queen want to find the yellow witch? Now I had even more questions than I started with, but that would have to wait. On day 100, we returned to the castle to find our defenses breached. We left the prisoners on the ship and ran toward the castle. There were some vindicators we had to fight off, but the captain told me to go find the queen. I found her battling who I assumed to be the archivoker because he seemed very powerful. I began running to go help, but I was stopped by a giant beast who said this wasn't my fight. I sat there and watched helplessly as they fought. Eventually, the warped witch was overpowered by the archivoker. While I had a swirl of emotions fuming within me, I knew better than to try to take on someone more powerful than the Warped Witch. As the Evoker left with his pet, I realized it was up to me now to gather the Warped Army back to the base and return to our own universe. But when I walked into the throne room, the portal was destroyed. We're stuck here with no way back. Then I remembered the prisoners we left on the ship with no one guarding them. I ran back to the shore and found the Piglin King was missing, <laughs> but he did leave the pillager behind. So I put him in jail and went to go find the captain. It looks like we're stuck here. Yeah. Well, we may not have expected this, but I think we're going to be just fine. Why do you say that? Well, because we have you to lead us, my king. It looks like we're stuck in this universe, and I'm the closest thing they have to a leader. Well, at least I managed to survive 100 days as a warped piglin in hardcore Minecraft. Thanks to Mudflops and Lagundo for helping me make this video, to Luke the Notable for starting the 100 days trend, to my patrons for your continued support, and to you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.